Hello, my name is uh, Yehonatan Charvit. I'm the author of Data Oriented Programming, published by Manning. And um, there is a big thing in uh, software engineering, which is uh, complexity. And there are many paradigms and many ways to write code. But uh, one of them is really powerful in order to reduce system complexity. And this is what we call data-oriented programming. By complexity, I mean the thing that makes it hard for human beings to understand how a system works. You know, the thing that makes it difficult to uh, fix bugs or to add new features. When you add a feature here, it corrupts everything there. So that's what we call complexity. And data-oriented programming is a paradigm that reduces system complexity for not for every kind of system, but for information systems like backend uh, applications, frontend applications, web servers, data pipelines, uh, uh, rich web apps that run run in the browser, things like that. And how do we do that? In fact, the key is to treat data as a first-class citizen, or even put it in a shorter way, to treat data as data, as it should be, right? The question is, how do we do that? How do we treat data as data? Well, it's not as hard as it may sound. For that, we need to follow four simple, simple but deep principles. The first one is we separate between code and data. The second one is that we represent data with generic data structures. The third one is that we never ever mutate data. And the fourth one is that we separate between data representation and data validation. Let me go over each of these principles one by one. So the first one, we separate between code and data. Unfortunately, we have been uh, taught by object-oriented programming that data should be encapsulated into objects, that we should mix together data and behavior into object. <sighs> That's sad, but the first thing we need in order to be able to treat data as data is to separate between code and data. So we have functions or methods on one hand and data on the other hand. And data by definition is stateless. So the, the code that we write for implementing our behavior is also stateless. So we, are, we have code on one hand, data on the other hand, and it has a huge impact on reducing complexity. That was separating between code and data. Principle number two, we represent data as data, right? Data is data, so why should we represent it not as data? What do I mean by that? By that? I mean to use generic data structures like hash maps or dictionaries, as we call them uh, sometimes. When we represent data, as data with generic data structures, we don't have to bother our mind with complicated uh, data modeling. We can manipulate data with a plethora of data manipulation uh, functions. We can reuse code, we can leverage code written by others or by libraries. We don't have to reinvent the wheel for each and every uh, business entity in our system. So that was representing data as data. Principle number three is that data is immutable, right? Like, like in life. I mean, if the weather is rainy today, it's a fact, it's not gonna change. And when the weather gets sunny, it's another fact about the reality. We don't mutate facts, facts are immutable. So in our information systems, when we would like to represent reality, the information that happens for real, we'd better uh, you do that with, in an immutable way, with no mutation, no state. State is such a huge source of complexity in traditional uh, web systems and other systems. The key thing is that until the year 2009, I think, it was very hard to, manip to manipulate immutable data in an efficient way. We had to do deep clone or copy and write and complicated things like that. But since the 
the rays of closure and its uh, persistent immutable data structures, now it has been ported to virtually any programming language, Java, Ruby, uh, Python, JavaScript, um, C++, whatever. So we, ha we, we have no reason for uh, not using immutable data structures. So that was principle number three, we never mutate data. And the fourth and last principle is about data schema or data manipulation. And indeed, when we write a system and when we, the code base grows, when we engage more team members, etc., uh, we need to find our ways into our data. We cannot just manipulate data in the wild. So how do we do that? Are we going to use static typing? No. We prefer to uh, write down the schema for our data and to write it in a way that is separated from our data. So we have data representation on one hand, according to the three principles I just mentioned. And we have the schema for data validation on the other end, and they are not mixed together, they are separated. And we decide when and how, and how often we want to manipulate data. We are free sometimes to just have data and send it over the wire, manipulate it a bit, add a new field, remove a field, rename a field, etc. And when we want, when it's important, we have the possibility, the choice to manipulate data. So there are ways, there are languages like JSON schema that allows us to write a data schema. And we, the programmers, we decide when we want to uh, validate the, the data according to the schema. And once again, it gives us an edge, it leverage our uh, ability to move fast to make the system, to keep the complexity of the system uh, low. So that was principle number four. We separate between data validation and data representation. As you may have noticed, all of the four principles of data oriented programming are about uh, separation, decoupling, which is the meta principle of every good uh, programming uh, paradigm. Let me recap them quickly. We separate between code and data. We represent data as data with generic data structures. We never ever mutate data. And when we want to validate data, we separate between data representation and data uh, manipulation. And when we write our code for information systems in such a way, uh, followed by in following the four principles of data oriented programming, the system complexity remains low, programming become fun again, we can grow our team, we can grow our code base, and we can make the world a better place.